Hello my soccer universe, it is with a bit of a delay, but here is the Serie A review via delay because we had Tuesday evening games and boy the biggest result in these games came actually uh, in those and yes it was against a team that I actually do like a whole lot I would say if it wasn't for Milan I would be supporting that particular team in Serie A um, and yes I do not have a jersey from the team that won but boy, is it a big story. I think Cremonese is not winless anymore. In the top five, and I think even in all the leagues that I'm covering, Cremonese were the only team that have not won yet. And they get it down. They, ha they have been threatening. They have been having some great uh, results in the Coppa Italia where they actually made it to the semifinals. Beating Napoli in penalties. Beating Roma in Rome. And they beat Roma again. And I think no team deserves to go winless in a season. This is just something unfathomable. And it fills me with joy, even though it happened against Roma. But it fills me with joy to see a team getting the first win. And if you saw the celebrations at the end of the game, you saw how much this meant for these players. And that was just wonderful. But there were more stories. We had a super entertaining Derby della Mole. Also yesterday evening, uh, where Torino just cannot get the win against Juve. They had so many chances in this one. And if they would have been just a little bit better defending set pieces, I think Torino could have won that one. But we saw Paul Pogba coming back. So maybe there's some sign. And if it wasn't for the 15-point penalty, which Juve is appealing as we speak, um... Juve would be in second place at the moment. Also have that, that, that in mind. We have to talk, of course, about the team that I'm wearing. It seems I'm wearing them quite a whole lot. At least I have that in the back of my mind. But I don't mind it because I actually do like Bologna. And I honestly, if I once I saw that result, I have been toying around with getting a second, if not a third Bologna jer jersey. And yeah working on it <laughs> i may not do it immediately but that basically sealed it i need to get a uh, at, at least an alternate uh, to the home jerseys that i have although they won wearing the home jersey and inter lost to them and inter is keep keeping to not perform well in away games but only for the first time since a long time won two consecutive home games against inter inter lost the championship last season in bologna and now there again, Bologna giving them trouble. Of course, me as a Milan fan, that makes me smile. What makes me more smile is that Milan have now, I think, four, uh, four games in a row without conceding a goal after letting in uh, 18 in the previous uh, four. What happened? What happened? And to top, 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 the, the last video, we said, okay, was kind of a so-and-so performance against Torino. Against Spurs, yeah, you saw some light. Against Monza, it looked already quite good. Against Atalanta, yes, it was not swashbuckling. Yes, it was very pragmatic, but it was a really good performance. Milan definitely flipped the script. And that is something very enjoyable, at least for this Milan fan here. On top of that, those Milan fourth jer jerseys, I was skeptically. And if you saw my uh, chat with Matt, I said I don't mind it, um, but I was not really onto it. Once I saw it with the pants, the full kit, the only thing is maybe the socks were let down. But the full kit, I'm fully on board with that one. Uh, and that's kind of a little bit on top of my wish list. I just hope that the prices will come down at some point. And we finish it, of course, with the Champions League Napoli. Keep winning and at this point it's almost uh, ridiculous to talk about them because they keep winning and the rest of the league keeps coughing up points and so i think uh, napoli is now on the big procession towards the third championship and yeah that's another jersey that i would love to have and yeah with all those wishes you see already the money will be running thin <laughs> relatively quickly because i don't have all that money at the moment so one has to make prudent choices there and we'll start actually with Napoli's win at Empoli. Uh, I mean, it came rather quick. Uh, Ismaili uh, with an own goal after Quara uh, again led the shot. And then Ozyman uh, puts one in, 28th minute. Uh, game is gone and Napoli could have led by more. Mario Rui sent off with a red card. That might uh, pay a little bit down the road. But honestly, at this point, it's a foregone conclusion that Napoli are champ, 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 as I say. So solo with a, a remarkable win at Lecce, because uh, Lecce have been 
getting really good results. However, the big one was Sunday in the early afternoon when Bologna played a really tight game against Inter, took already the lead through Musabero that was then disallowed for a, a, a fractional offside. Then, you know, chances on each side, of course, um, the big unit. Lukaku is missing chances, uh, not make, 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 make them, but overall Inter not looking right up for it. Yes, they had the game against Porto, but uh, it just didn't look right. Um, then Scouten sends Orsolini and with a really great shot, it's 1-0 and honestly, it was all that Bologna deserved. So pretty big win there. Pretty huge win there also for Salernitana. And yes, I have not revealed it officially on, on my channel, but I have a Salernitana jersey. You see it right up there. So if you watch this video, you get a little preview as I sometimes tend to do. The game ended, was goalless at the half and then Salernitana kicked into the index gear, of course, now with a new coach. Uh, Kulibali, Castanos and Cantreva scoring the three uh, and a late red card for Monza, but that didn't um, make it uh, much, you know, didn't have much of an impact. It's remarkable as Monza now lost two in a row after having a pretty good streak uh, among those winning at Juventus again. So, you know, uh, what's hap, hap, hap happening there? Everything was going well until they hit Milan and suddenly it turns the other way around and losing away to Salernitana, probably the new coach effect. And I wonder if Salantana can stay in for another season. Would be definitely interesting. Udine play a 2-2 draw against Spezia. And then Milan against Atalanta. I think Atalanta had no shots on goal in the entire game. And I was always waiting when it is coming. Yes, in the second half they were improved. But in the first half, Milan and can we say Malik Cho. What a find. What a performance. He had Hoyland completely in his bag. And so did the rest of the Milan defense. I mean, Lukman and Hoyland, two of the most uh, dangerous um, players of fine uh, or revelations of the Serie A season, were no factors in that game. It was all about Milan. And the only thing I have to say is that the finishing was not there. And that has been now the red thread uh, going through the uh, pre previous games. But Mike Magnon is back and suddenly you feel a whole lot more confidence. Although I'm always, I'm now really worried about Mike Magnon injuring himself again because this immediately has an impact on Milan. But fortunately he didn't have much to do and I said already the fourth jersey and especially Mike Magnon's golden jersey, it's just brilliant. It's brilliant from every point and I... And it was as brilliant as, the, as, as his performance. The first goal will go down as a Musa on goal, but what a shot by Theo. It's all Theo's goal. Uh, and it also was brilliantly uh, assisted by Giroud, who had who has been also the first half that, that, that he had. Yes, he should have made a bare barrier chance earlier, but it was not, not easy to take. But uh, his attacking play, the way he held on balls and distributed them back and let every and kind of... Um, accentuated everyone around him, that was pretty impressive. And so uh, the ball falls to Thea, who takes a direct shot uh, with full power that hits just the inside of the post, goes on the back of Musso and in. And, you know, what a reversal, because just uh, this past weekend where um, they played at Monza, a shot on the post went onto Tata back and went out. So it's those slim margins, but Milan take the lead and, as I said, should have taken more. Uh, Leao will unfortunately miss because there was uh, he was through on goal and suddenly a uh, ball is brought down. And I don't know why it's a red card and he was protesting, please, this has to be a red card. Why this was not looking for me? It was a red card, to be honest, but, you know, uh, I think Toloi got that one. Um, second half, again, uh, Leao presented Giroud and Messias with two great chances to convert. And if they convert, everyone's talking about how great Leao was. Yes, he had a few shots that that was all, but I think he had a, he had actually a pretty good game in this one. Um, it's just that it didn't put that game away. And I was so nervous because I know that it will happen that Milan will not win this one. However, finally Leao assists Messias and he thinks it over. Even Slatan makes a comeback. Um, and I have to say, overall, everything happy at Milan. It really has have been. It looked good. Uh, probably the goal of the season came, uh, the season, uh, maybe the weekend, let's put that, came at Fiorentina's 3 0 win over Verona, where 
Anthony Barak, who was such a linchpin for Verona last season, of course gets the uh, goal already early on. Uh, Verona not uh, lucky in conversion for Chess, whereas Cabral gets it 2-0. And then Biragi in the uh, 89th minute with a free kick from his own half lobs the goalkeeper. But it was a little bit also foul, uh, fair play questions have to be asked because there was an injured Verona player there. But the referee had, had already given the free kick and he pulls puts in. But yeah, uh, whenever you see a free kick from your own half, that was pretty special, I gotta say. Although, you know, fair play. Um, has to be questioned. Lazio get a 1-0 win uh, through a Luis, uh, wonderful Luis Alberto strike and then we are at Cremonese, I already said it. Uh, Roma started rather brightly, but it quickly was soaked up by Cremonese and then uh, Jude gives them a lead expertly assisted by Valeri, a great forward attacking play again put, uh, with, with the chest, putting it down for uh, Jude who then takes a shot and it is in. The only sad thing about this whole game is that the stadium was not a sellout like it was against the other big teams that they have been playing, but I guess that's what a Tuesday uh, early evening kickoff does for you. And that lead was deserved for Cremonese. In the second half, clearly Mourinho says something uh, to kind of get his Roma team going. Uh, he was so riled up that he immediately got sent off again. But they brought on Abraham Abraham for Belotti, they brought in El Sharavi, and you know, uh, all the big hitters, uh, so Solbak, Matic, turned around, tried to throw every, everything there, and then in the end they get the equalizer through Spinazzola, who suddenly is in a central striker position with no one around him. He has ample of time to take the ball down, control it, pull it in into net. And you thought this might not turn things around? However, uh, it was a, pen a penalty was given not a sh a long thereafter, about 10 minutes after, where, um, yes, the goal it did, it meant to, to put, uh, I think, Giovanni down, but it was a penalty. It was a clear penalty, and the, and the ref gave it. Giovanni converts it, although uh, Rui Patricio was right there. And it's 2-1, and Cremonese hold on. And as I said already, if you saw the scenes afterwards, it was heartwarming to see that. It was really, really, really great. Cremonese, winless, no more. And then I already said the Turin Derby was a very entertaining affair. Caramo already after two in, in, uh, within two minutes giving uh, Torino the lead and it looked really that they can hang, hang on. Quadrado then equalizes, I think it's, well, that's, it's the second goal. Quadrado then equalizes, but Torino was really well in the game and when uh, Sanabria gave them the lead, you really thought, yes, they can do something here. However, the one thing they cannot do is defend set PC. Already the Quadrado goal didn't look good, uh, the way Carlos Cal Cal but then uh, I think it was a Di, a Di Maria free kick that Danilo then heads in via the inside of the post. It goes in. Yes, Vanya gets it out, but it was clearly over the line. And so with 2 2, Juve had a lifeline. Because if this goes 2 1, Torino. I think Torino have a much better chance. Then it goes back and forth, both sides hitting um, the woodwork. The Juve first, and then a little, and then a little bit later, it was Torino. Um, and then it's a free kick. The Prima converts, and yes, it was no, there was no offside. And then a little bit later, uh, Prima uh, also assists Rabio, and it's a four-two win for Juve. A game that was hanging in the balance for the longest of times. And Torino again cannot win against Juve, uh, which is very much disappointing. It's also disappointing because Torino have, have not won now in three games. And a, a season that actually looked good is kind of going a little, a little bit sideways, especially with Bologna winning so many games as of late. Uh, which we can also see in the standings. You know, Torino now falling to 10th, Bologna in 8th. Level on points with Juventus. Yes, Juventus would have 15 points more, which is 50, which would be second place. So uh, you is actually secretly having a really good season. Also want to point out that, you know, they have only lost four games. Milan and Lazio have lost five, or Inter have already lost seven, but Inter don't draw many. That's why they're up there still in second place. As for Champions League, for now, it looks Inter, Milan uh, are set on, and then it's a, a fight for the last spot. Um, and I have to say, despite it being 10 points to Lazio, the way you, you were playing, 
I honestly think they might actually do it even with the points uh, total, but you know, it might be a rather steep, <laughs> steep uh, claim of, of of mine. But I, I think his Juve team is not bad, to be honest. On the bottom, Cremonese get the first win and they're not even last place. Sampdoria now in last place. Both teams though look rather lost. Elas Verona also in trouble. Spezia Salentano. Um, are the other teams that are in contention of going down. So uh, it will be interesting, but unfortunately, I, I, it, it really hurts us to see probably the best jerseys in the league being relegated, unfortunately. Uh, and as for expected, it's uh, Verona, Cremonese and Sampdoria at the moment. However, many things can change. I think the win of Salentano boosted their chances slightly, but you can see already with the shading, it's rather, rather tight. As it's up top with Inter still slightly ahead of Milan, uh, better rating if you look at the relative strengths, but you see Juve in seventh. Um, yes, they, there is a chance that they could catch a fourth place, but it's it's an outside chance. Let's put, put it that way. I'm also curious if Bologna could get back into business there, although I think it will also be a little bit of a stretch. I give you the next two weeks for Serie A, uh, uh, although I'm planning to do it already next week. We have actually three really interesting games next week. We have on Friday, Napoli against Lazio. That's about as a, a really classic Serie A duel, as is Fiorentina against Milan. And Fiorentina, uh, very much a Jekyll and Hyde team where you not know where they're going, but they have been very good in the Europa League. Um, they have just got a win again. So, and Fiorentina away is always a tough one for Milan. They always play hard. And then a classic with Roma, Juve. And then I think on Monday, Torino, Bologna is also not a game to be looked over, honestly. Uh, the week after, uh, maybe not as many high profile ties. We have Inter playing at Spezia, Bologna, Lazio, and Napoli, Atalanta. I think are the two games on Saturday that might be worth your attention. Roma, Sassuolo, potentially. I think that Juve uh, and Milan should have it easy, but I always am careful with saying those. So that was it from me from Serie A for this week. Please let me know what you thought about the games. Uh, uh, hap, 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 happening on this weekend. Which uh, results did you enjoy? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!